Drawing has always been my absolute primary medium since I was very, very young. I was always, as a toddler, I was always drawing, always drawing figures, always drawing figures with interesting outfits and costumes, always wondering about the body, always wondering about my body, even as a child, what will I look like when I am older, staring in the mirror? What will I look like when I am an old woman? These are questions I've always asked myself regarding what constitutes myself, what constitutes my figure, my body, is a question of substance, uh, even more so than identity. And so I've never ever questioned drawing and it's, it's primacy for me. I have never painted, I've always drawn, and I just kept drawing. So drawing has never been in relation to anything for me other than itself. It is the first thing and it is the final thing. And so it can encompass everything. And this is something I have always had absolute confidence about and I have never questioned. It is everything. It is your first touch, your taste, your understanding. It is a realization. It can be a wound, a scratch, a mark, a division, a dividing line, a feeling, an awakening. Drawing is primal. Drawing is underneath everything. Drawing is your design, your mechanism, your motivation. It is the truth of what you are doing. Drawing is action. This one is called Clio from 2009. In real life, it's very big. So it's somewhere actually in real life about the size of this projection. This is like the Valkyrie that's on display here at the show, the Drawing Now show, is charcoal coal on vellum, which is a semi-transparent paper. Charcoal and vellum are not really supposed to go together traditionally as a medium for drawing. But one day I put them together and I fell very much in love with the way that one reacts and responds to the other. So not all the time, but sometimes I will draw charcoal on vellum, as you can see in this show as well. <clears throat> Often when I talk about drawing, I invoke the example of Anne-Sophie Mutter, the way she plays the violin. If you've ever seen Anne-Sophie Mutter play the violin, you will notice that it is not as if she is playing anything. It is as if the instrument is playing her. When I draw, and people ask me this question all the time, what is it like when you make a drawing? What do you have to do? Do you think of it and then draw it? These kinds of questions. The thing is, is that when I am in the mode of drawing and really drawing. It's like I'm not thinking about anything. It's like I stop thinking altogether. And the best pieces that I make, they really just come out by themselves. It is as if I get consumed by the action of doing it. I'm not thinking, I might be kind of daydreaming, I'm hardly looking at what I'm doing. Not really. It all just comes out at the right moment. And to get to that moment, a bit like practicing an instrument, I do a lot of drawings. So I do a lot of drawings and I throw them away. So I have to reject a lot to get to the point where the whole thing just comes out by itself. And I have to make the analogy of simply playing music on an instrument. It is just like that where you submit to the medium and it takes you long. And when you're done, you have made an incredible drawing. And I'm able to step back and look at it almost as if it appeared by itself. I don't know exactly where it came from, but there it is. And then it's finished. Also, many people ask, well, what's happening with the skeleton? I have been drawing the figure since I was very little, so I've been questioning the body and how it's put together. I've always been fascinated by things which are the understructure or the substructure or what lies underneath things in order to make them be what they are and to make them, um, in, render them into the image, into the surface that you actually see. So my interest in skeletal origins and skeletal images really comes from a kind of base interest in anatomy and in structure. But then I get so into that that I kind of jump out and this, 
the, the anatomy then becomes the surface, and the surface becomes the anatomy, and I sort of blow apart the distinctions that we sometimes take for granted, although we don't really understand them, between what's under and what's above. That boundary that we think is so exact, it's not so exact. We have many things between the surface of our skin and, and our skeleton. We can't possibly describe them all. If you were a doctor, you would know more than most of us, but not everything. There's so much that we don't know. So for me, starting with the skeleton is quite an awesome place to begin, in a way, it's a privilege. And from there, I go where the drawing takes me. But sometimes I'm jumping to the surface and I'm back to the skeleton and jumping out into space and back to the bone. And I allow myself the freedom to just go wherever I, the drawing wants me to go. And so I get these kinds of fantastic, in on the one hand, but forensically accurate, on the other hand, combinations of things um, that make sense on their own terms. This is a goat, this is a goat with ghost hand. Sometimes I draw animals. I have a fascination for certain animals, for goats, for horses. The goat came actually with a fascination with the satyr from a young age because the satyr is a literal combination of animal and human. And I sometimes ask the question, just like with the anatomy, what is the difference between animal and human? We are human, but we are also animals. And I love the idea of drawing as a title, but I'm not so in love with the idea of people because what's a person? I'm not really sure. I can't really define it. Um, it. I can't quite, it's difficult for me to understand that as a total concept. Drawing, yes, but people, no. And so I bring back to this idea of animal versus human. I think humans can often act like animals and animals can often act like humans. So I, I think about these things and how these things combine, how they can combine as one thing and how they fight against each other and yet produce something else. So I'm close to animals and often will draw animals. And I like these combination, human, animal, literal, in, in satyrs, in ancient gods, Egyptian gods, for example, throughout ancient history, um, looking at these, um, these, these combinations where they succeed and where they fail. Now here is a picture of a, a big wave. It has some big waves coming off of a storm. And I wanted to talk also about, which connects to my fascination with the animal, um, my fascination with very powerful forces that are beyond your control. Because even though the, a drawing draws a boundary and draws a line, it's just for a moment. So the title, Drawing Now, as a show, is a good one because it's now in the moment. And when I draw, it's coming out of a moment, just that moment, and then I can draw something else. So sometimes I'll do series of one idea over and over again because I don't get tired of the idea, and I can keep drawing it, keep drawing it, keep drawing it, and it's never quite the same. So waves and the ocean, what a giant thing that we cannot fully conceptualized, no way, and easily it has the power to knock everybody over. And this fascinates me as a kind of medium, an amorphic medium that is very hard to harness or contain. These kinds of forces fascinate me. How can you work with them? This is a drawing on um, black paper with white charcoal. So with the black paper, I'm, I'm able to address the line differently and also negative space differently the play between what you can see and what you can't see, how the, what is invisible works with the visible, how what you do see is apparent, but there's a lot that you don't see that's there as well, making what you do see possible to be seen. Just as we all sit here and we all have skeletons supporting us and are enabling us to sit, enabling me to stand here and talk, but obviously we don't see them. So I'm interested in how the unseen and the seen work together and play off each other um, to create what, the pot, what, what is possible and what is there. So oftentimes I like to play around with the power of the face. So often we see images in the media, in advertising, in the image of Christ, for example, historically, where you have just the face. The head alone is often um, all that you see and has a very strong power. And of course, we don't question that it, there is no body. It's just the face is it. So I like to, um, sometimes in my drawings, 
take away the face and make the body the dominant, the dominant um, material in the drawing that I'm making, looking just at the body and taking away the face. So this one is called helm. There's a helmet there, but there's no head, there's no face in it. There you can see it more clearly. So the top there, you see an ear, and the roundness coming out at the sharp point is the helmet. There's a kind of shoulder piece there, and almost like an epaulette. And then there's a nipple, and it goes down. That's called helm. This is a Valkyrie. So oftentimes in my work, you will, the, the figures are floating, and they also there's no horizon line. So the figure itself totally defines the space, almost like they are the space itself. The figure is the landscape. There's nothing else going on. There's no narrative. There's no chair in the room that it's referring to. There's, there's nothing else that you can see other than the actual figure that's there. That's the details. You could see how much is going on there with, this, with the side and so much movement. I've been t talked about and written about as uh, someone who's, who's erotic, which I find to be a very problematic and sort of ill ill-informed or understood word. It's the easy thing to use without really knowing what that means. But one thing that's true to my work is that when I'm drawing the naked figure, I actually don't ever draw the genitalia, which no one ever <laughs> notices. So this is as close as it gets. It's usually I leave the space blank because I find it to be such a powerful space that I don't have to do anything, I just leave it. Maybe there's a smudge or a scratch, but it's not anything I ever focus on. I just think it's, uh, it's this really powerful zone. I just leave it blank. I'm looking at everything uh, but the genitalia. Um, so I've done a series called Masturbators, but they, they were just nudes with splayed legs, usually with less than that, usually just plain blank. Um, but I find it a bit satisfying that just a smudge or a little puff of charcoal can indicate a whole erogenous zone or whole organ. Uh, it doesn't take much. And there are certain things in my drawings that often people ask me about. What are the lines that come out? What is the thing? They're just, it's just the drawing. I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing. I just like the line and suddenly the line comes off the figure. I just get into the doing it, and I don't question what, what's in front of me. And so it comes together like you see it. I very much like the idea of transformation because you take a stick of charcoal and a piece of paper and you're able to take the figure and transform it and turn it into something utterly fascinating and on the one hand recognizable, but on the other hand new. So I like other materials that you can transform into things. And one of these materials that I like very much and I've discovered in the past five years or so is metals. So metals can be melted down. You can make a bridge, as you see here. You can make a ship like El Faro that was sunk. You can do extraordinary things with metal. Um, I think about the story of the golem, which is an ancient Jewish story about um, a magical creature made of clay that's brought to life by a magical word. And this is... Um, a rendering of it, a silent movie, um, I think it's 1921, where this is the golem in that movie. So it is like a sculpture brought to life. So I feel that something is similar, that it's something similar happens with art. You're bringing, you are animating something, you're bringing it to life. It's full of energy, even though objectively these materials ha do not have life in, in the sense we understand. So this is a, an image of a piece I did. It's made from iron, from eisen. And it's very satisfying for me that the stuff that makes the ship and the stuff that makes the bridge, you can take and you can make this instead. As an ending, the originals that I sculpt out of plastiline, which is a kind of clay uh, mixed with oil, and also this is like drawing. So this is where my hand touches it, just like with the drawing. And for me, sculpture and drawing, I make no distinction at all, actually. It's this hand that's doing it both times. So I don't actually really totally understand the difference. And it, there is really no difference for, for me. But it, it, the touch is the same. It's as direct. It's also about the action of making it. And I get lost in the same way making them. And I just wanted to end with a quote from Munk who I know is here in this museum, but I haven't seen it yet. And it says, we have suffered death during birth. We are left with this strangest experience, the real birth, which is called death. The birth to what? <laughs> <laughs>